Did Alexander die a natural death? Or was he poisoned? There are so many theories and myths surrounding the end of Alexander's life, and today we're going to sort out facts from fiction and explore the true story of what really happened to Alexander the Great. You may have heard of Alexander's great conquests and his vast empire. Let's dive into the story of Alexander the Great, one of the most famous and successful military leaders in history. Early Life of Alexander Alexander the Great was born in 356 BC in Pella, the capital of the ancient kingdom of Macedon. He was the son of King Philip II of Macedon and Queen Olympias and was educated by the philosopher Aristotle. From a young age, Alexander showed great promise as a leader and military strategist. He was known for his bravery and intelligence and was highly respected by his troops. He inherited his father's military genius and used it to conquer a vast territory stretching from modern-day Greece to India. Alexander was known for his innovative tactics and his ability to inspire and lead his troops. And he earned a reputation as one of the greatest military leaders in history. His Military Prowess Alexander the Great was able to win the hearts of his troops at a young age through a combination of his charisma, military prowess, and a strategic brilliance. He was known for his bravery and determination on the battlefield, and his troops admired his fearlessness and leadership skills. Alexander was also able to connect with his troops on a personal level, taking an interest in their well-being and showing genuine concern for their welfare. He was known for sharing in the hardships of his men and for leading by example. In addition to his personal qualities, Alexander was also a skilled military strategist who was able to come up with innovative tactics and strategies that caught his enemies off guard. He was able to lead his troops to victory against seemingly impossible odds, earning their loyalty and respect. Overall, Alexander's ability to win the hearts of his troops was a key factor in his success as a leader and helped him to build a powerful and devoted army. Successor Fight Alexander's early life was marked by conflict and political intrigue. His mother, Olympias, was a strong-willed woman who fought fiercely to protect her son's place as the rightful heir to the throne of Macedon. Alexander's father, Philip II, was a brilliant military strategist who spent years building up the strength and wealth of the kingdom. However, Philip had many wives and children, and there was constant competition amongst his family members for the right to secede him as king. Despite these challenges, Alexander quickly rose to power and began building an empire that would come to dominate the ancient world. Ascend to the Throne Alexander ascended to the throne of King Philip II in 336 BC. King Philip II was assassinated at his daughter's wedding. Philip had been preparing to launch a campaign against the Persians, and many historians believe that his assassination was carried out by a member of the royal court who was opposed to the war. After Philip's death, Alexander was quickly proclaimed king by the military and the people of Macedon. He was only 20 years old at the time, but he had already proven himself to be a skilled warrior and leader. Alexander was determined to continue his father's plans for conquest and to build up the empire that Philip had spent his life creating. In the years that followed, Alexander launched a series of successful military campaigns that expanded the borders of the Macedonian Empire and brought him great fame and wealth. His empire became one of the most powerful in the world. Alexander's reign was marked by innovation and military genius, and he is remembered today as one of the greatest leaders in history. The Last Battle of Alexander the Battle of Hydaspes was a military campaign led by Alexander the Great in 326 BC during his conquest of the Indus Valley in modern-day Pakistan. The battle took place on the banks of the Hydaspes River and was fought against the powerful Indian king Porus. Alexander and his troops arrived at the Hydaspes River in the spring of 326 BC and immediately began preparing for battle. Porus was well aware of Alexander's reputation as a formidable military leader, and he had assembled a large and well-trained army to defend his kingdom. The two sides clashed on the banks of the river in a fierce battle. Alexander's troops were able to gain the upper hand, thanks in part to their superior training and equipment. Porus was eventually defeated, and his kingdom was annexed by the Macedonian Empire. Despite the victory, the battle was a costly one for Alexander and his troops. Many lives were lost, and Alexander was hit in the chest by an arrow, which punctured his lung. Alexander's Illness 
Despite the severity of his wound, Alexander was able to survive for about a month after being shot. He remained conscious and continued to lead his troops and make decisions about the direction of his empire. However, as time passed, Alexander's health began to deteriorate quickly. His wound became infected, and he developed a high fever and difficulty breathing. Despite the efforts of his physicians to treat his injury, Alexander's condition continued to worsen. Last Will of Alexander the Great It's not clear what the last will of Alexander the Great was and there's no surviving document that records his final wishes. There are many myths and legends surrounding the end of Alexander's life, but the truth of what happened is difficult to determine. Alexander was gravely ill in Babylon as he returned home after conquering many kingdoms. As he lay on his deathbed in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II, he realized the insignificance of the vast wealth he had amassed through his conquests and the power of his army. He longed to see his mother one last time before he passed away but knew his deteriorating health would not allow him to make the journey home. He called for his generals and announced that he will soon depart from this world and had three final requests and wanted them to be fulfilled without fail. The generals, with tears in their eyes, promised to honor Alexander's wishes. Alexander's first wish was that he wanted his coffin to be carried solely by the physicians that treated him. The reason for this was that he wanted to show the world that no doctor can truly heal anyone and that they are powerless to save a person from death. His second request was that the path leading to his grave would be scattered with the gold, silver, and precious stones in his treasury. By this, he wanted to demonstrate that despite spending his life accumulating riches, he was not able to carry a single ounce of gold with him when he left this world. He wanted the world to know that striving for wealth is a waste of time, energy, and peace of mind. The final and third wish was to keep both his hands hanging out of the coffin. He wanted to prove that everyone comes into this world with nothing and will leave with nothing. Death of Alexander the Great On June 13, 323 BC, Alexander died at the age of 32. The exact cause of his death is still a matter of debate among historians, with some speculating that he was poisoned, while others believe that he died of natural causes or complications from his injury. After his death, Alexander's empire was divided among his generals, and his legacy lived on as a model of military success and leadership. His conquests had a lasting impact on the ancient world, and it has continued to inspire people throughout history. Even though his legacy lived on for centuries and his conquests had a lasting impact on the course of world history, the world's greatest conqueror died at the young age of 32, with his wish to be dying in his hometown and after meeting his mother unfulfilled. This is what really happened to Alexander the Great. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out our videos on other historical figures. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss out on an upload. I'll see you on the next one.